Good morning and peace to you. My name is Reverend Masia Evans and I'm the pastor here at First United Methodist Church of Roseville or First Church. This is a place where we live into the gospel message of love as a community that is committed to offering hope to this world. I want to just thank all of you who have been joining us by video throughout the last year or so. You are part of our family just like the people who are able to come here in person. This year, we've been living into the idea that church is not just us coming together in the building, but church is a verb. It's the places and the ways in which we offer love and hope and belonging to the community. As such, our outreach ministries are very important. What you're about to hear now are two presentations. Our first presentation is from Dennis Bowe, our SPRC chair, who will be talking about our ACE program, which is geared towards our Latino and Latinx outreach. And then secondly, you'll hear from Alma Caravarin from Placer People of Faith Working Together, who will be talking about who she is and the work that she does in this community. Enjoy. Good morning. Good morning. Or I should say, buenos dias. <laughs> A discover, discover your neighbor's world. Two worlds are richer than one. These profound words come from a Chinese fortune cookie. <laughs> David McMillan and David Chavis, who are community psychologists, defined a sense of community as a feeling that members have of belonging, a feeling that members matter to one another and to the group, and a shared faith that members matter to one another and to the group, and a shared faith that members' needs will be met through commitment to be together. I have been a member of the Roosevelt First United Methodist Church's mission team since 2016. Membership on this team has averaged six to eight people. When the team began to focus on immigration ministry in 2018, it became abundantly clear that due to the small number of people, there was a need to network with other organizations. Two team members were the impetus for outreach to the following organizations. Placer People of Faith Together, the missions team has supported this organization, focusing on food security, affordable housing, COVID-19 education and resources, immigration issues, criminal justice, climate change, and the Poor People's Campaign. The missions team has partnered with Placer People of Faith Together to support vaccination clinics at our church targeting the underserved neighborhoods of our church community. The team assembled and distributed door hanger kits advertising the clinics. Secondly, Placer Prosper. The missions team members, Kathy Weirbeck and Lori Brady, have become allies to local members of our Hispanic community who are working through Placer Prosper to be change agents for their families. The allies meet with the change agents at Roseville First United Methodist Church, online and at local parks. There is an emphasis on family goals, including educational opportunities, budgeting and financial strategies, entrepreneurship, and nutrition. Recently, Alba Ulick uh, has become an ally for a Latina group. NorCal Resist. This organization focuses on immigration issues, and they're part of a, and they have part of a rapid response network that defends against local immigration and customs enforcement activities. They provide trainings on how to navigate police and ICE encounters. Roosevelt First United Methodist Church hosted a free light event for NorCal in our church parking lot. And our good sister Audrey has been involved with uh, NorCal. Uh, 
the purpose of that program, the parking lot or the brake lights, is to minimize unwanted police encounters for those in the Hispanic and Latino communities. Uh, fourthly is the social concern ministry of the St. Rose of Lima Church in Roseville. On October 14th, 2019, boy, that was, seems like hundreds of years ago now, uh, six members of our missions team, along with the Placer people of Faith Together, hosted a social gathering at St. Rose for the Hispanic Latino community. Food and gift cards for uh, game prizes were provided by the two groups. Three members of the mission team then taught English as a second language classes at St. Rose from the fall of 2019 until March of 2020, when the program was shut down as everything else was because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Placer People of Faith Together and the Social Concern Ministry have assisted with uh, our church's Halloween trunk retreat by providing decorated trunks and conducting the games. Now, the Lay Missioner Program. In November 2021, I received an email announcing that the California Nevada Conference, in partnership with the Methodist National Plan for Hispanic Ministries, was sponsoring a lay missioner training designed to support the Hispanic Latino communities. The nine-session program through Zoom was for lay persons who wanted to be trained to work with Hispanics and Latinos in their communities. We had a homework assignment each session with final assignment to develop a model of community involvement for our church. Thus, church family, hold on to your seats as we prepare to launch the ACE program. ACE. In the areas surrounding uh, Roosevelt First United Methodist Church, there is an enclave of Spanish-speaking families. From my walking this neighborhood to distribute flyers to, for the COVID-19 vaccination clinic held at our church and our yard sale, I sense the neighborhood is inhabited by families with younger children and older adults, many of whom are likely to be on fixed incomes. My hope and reason for participating in the Lay Missioner Program was to establish a team to outreach to this community. In developing a community outreach program to the community surrounding our church, I utilized a concept that I have monitored with the acronym ACE, A-C-E. Several things in my own personal life journey led to the development of the program. Number one, Growing up in a small rural Iowa town of 1,200 people well, where everyone knew everyone, there was always a sense of caring for one another. Sometimes you knew more than you wanted to know, too. <laughs> uh, number two was my professional career of 43 years as a clinical psychologist. I listened and I learned to accept others as they were. Many times I did not approve of their lifestyles and choices in life, but I listened and learned to be non-judgmental. Three, during Lent this year, Pastor uh, Dr. Reverend Masia Evans conducted via Zoom a study of the book, Compassion in Practice, The Way of Jesus, by Dr. Frank Rogers, Jr., the director of the Center for Engaged Compassion at Claremont School of Theology. This study coincided with the lay missioner program, Thus, all of a sudden, compassion came on my radar. Uh, a is for, an ace is for acceptance of others. Treat all men, women, and children of all ethnic, racial, cultural, and national identity with respect and dignity. This is demonstrated through caring and compassion and empathy. Reconciliation is a key component. The golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, is a guiding principle. C, compassion. Writer, preacher, theologian, and ordained Presbyterian minister Frederick Butcher describes compassion in this manner. Compassion is sometimes the preordained ordained capacity for feeling what it is like to live inside somebody else's skin. 
It is knowledge that there can never really be peace and joy for me until there is peace and joy finally for you too. In Compassion and Practice, Dr. Rogers introduces us to radical compassion extended to others. Jesus advocated the coming of the kingdom, and notice I'm not saying kingdom, it's kingdom of God. God's kingdom is how the world would be governed if God were king instead of Caesar, the high priest, the rich, the racially entitled, or any other person uh, uh, or entity of privilege that rises to power and influence. The politics of compassion are radically inclusive. Jesus embodied this inclusiveness through the cultural custom of his day, the practice of table fellowship. In the Jewish world, only the cultically clean are allowed to dine at a ritually pure household. At Jesus' table, the invitation is extended to all, the rich, the lame, lepers, prostitutes, tax collectors, traitors, outcasts, and centurions. It is my vision that at Roseville First United Methodist Church, the ACE team will strive to spread the invitation from Jesus' table through the doors of our church and out into our community. This will be our demonstration of radical compassion, loving our neighbors. To summarize Dr. Rogers, the way of radical compassion can prove challenging and complex. Its music can seem dim, its distant steps obscure, and yet its song leads to life. It leads us back to our humanity. E, empowerment. Compassion transcends attending to the material needs of those who suffer. Compassion is to empower them with the skills, tools, and personal capacities to sustain them in their own survival and thriving. Through empowerment, we will help individuals to accept themselves as they are, to work with them to overcome life challenges, and to help them see new possibilities for their lives. Compassion lacking empowerment breeds dependency. Empowerment lacking care subverts the spirit. Being a strong believer in the philosophy that teaching someone how to do something for his or herself is more helpful to them in the long run than just doing it for them. This is known as the teach a man the fish proverb. Give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. Well, be a primary guide for our outreach program. Thus, the ACE philosophy is to recognize the great potential of each individual, and secondly, to offer each person a hand up and not a hand out. A hand out, which is uh, often is a quick fix, destroys a person's dignity and independence. I strongly believe that being aware of accepting the individual's potential and hands up perspective will lead to the sustainability of the ACE ministry. The ACE team. I have recruited Alba Ulick, <laughs> our church member uh, from Columbia who speaks fluent Spanish. And in fact, yesterday she was speaking such fluent Spanish, she was speaking to a Spanish woman yesterday. She turns to me and she's speaking in Spanish. And I unfortunately don't understand much more than what I said in the very beginning when I did my reading. <laughs> But uh, anyway, Alba has agreed to be on it, and I think all of you will agree that in addition to speaking Spanish, uh, Elba's a person who demonstrates interactions with others, a genuine concern for people's welfare. Thank you. Thank you. Other potential team members are members of our missions team, and the fourth Friday at First Church Volunteers, and all of you. Yay. Uh, Initially, I envision our ACE team uh, becoming an adjunct team to assist our pardoning organizations with their community activities. Uh, with time, it is my hope that the leaders will be identified in the Spanish-speaking community that will become fully participating members of the ACE team. 
Uh, I will be in Backman Hall after service along with Ama, who's from Placer People of Faith Together, and she's the community organizer, to answer questions and discuss further the numer Numero Uno Outreach Program of Roosevelt First United Methodist Church. Uh, Tuesday evening, uh, this May 24th at 7 p.m. after the prayer service, uh, we're going to have a Zoom with an organizational, for the purposes of organizing this group and talking about how we might go forward. And nothing is set in stone at this point. My concluding thoughts. The concepts, concepts of ACE are not new to the mission outreach ministries of our church. We've already been doing ACE. It just now has a name. Uh, ACE is and should be a part of all of our ministries. Hopefully, as the ACE moniker is transformed into a viable community program of Roosevelt First United Methodist Church, ACE will become associated with the synonyms for the word ACE. Excellent, first-rate, outstanding, and champion. I strongly believe that the ACE philosophy and devoted, and devoted team members will be the catalyst for our church to achieve its mission and ministry of compassionate outreach to our neighborhood Spanish-speaking brothers and sisters. And I'm guided by a Chinese proverb. Um, in almost all my tasks that I've undertaken in, in my lifetime, uh, this Chinese proverb was on a plaque that was given to my mother by a lady that she would have grown up with, and this is in my small community. And the lady lived to be 99, and so she was a part of my life for many, many years. And her family, uh, her daughters and her son, were very close friends. And my mother had this uh, plaque on an end table in our home, and then when she had to move into uh, a senior's apartment, she had again had it on her table. I now have this plaque on a table in my office, so I see it every day. All the flowers of tomorrow are in the seeds of today. And that's what I'm using as a guide as we launch this new ministry. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, it is really wonderful to be here today. I am as excited and I feel as deeply about Pastor Masia and all the different folks that I have met already here at um, First Church um, United Methodist because, um, believe it or not, I've known um, of your church for, I would say, 25 years at least. Um, and yet this is the first time that I have actually been um, here on a Sunday and seeing all of your faces at once. Um, and so this is a very special day for me. Um, and I'm here with a couple of, um, with an intention to just make it, uh, you know, get, every, get everyone to see my face at once. So you'll know who's that random person that's, going in and out of your church in different days, talking to different people and uh, being very difficult to keep track of. But um, that you know that I am available for conversation or questions and in any way that I can and, and at any point uh, be of help or service um, to you all and the different missions and work that you are all doing, what our life, you know, each of our individual lives ministry is, um, I'm here to offer my friendship. The um, specific, you know, and more formal reason in which I've been connected to um, First United Methodist Church is actually because I am part, I'm the community organizer for Placer People of Faith Together that um, Dennis, you know, briefly um, touched on in that. I'm not going to do a whole presentation on them, but I want you to know um, basically who, who we are um, in and try to give some um, idea to, to the fact that we, not, we not, are not only doing the work 
um, here at UNC, right? Um, the work that you are doing, rather, is not a work that you alone are doing, but rather that there is a lot of different congregations and parishes of different faiths, of different beliefs and traditions that are also aiming to do similar work and similar community building as you all are, and that we are not only a group that is powerful here because of that love and compassion in action, but that there is also other groups like us and folks. And so the purpose of Placer People of Faith Together, which is an interfaith nonprofit that's been in Placer County for about 10 years or so, um, is actually to uh, be a network of churches, and churches in the verb sense, as Pastor Masia said. Uh, the churching, the doing, the living out our faith values um, together, to be able to do um, together what we cannot do alone, right? And um, the connection to Placer People of Faith together has been in part because of the work of the outreach team here, which I am very thankful for and Kathleen, Kathy's leadership, and even Lori, um, who's uh, been you know, in and out of conversations through our community that has just really made us uh, feel welcome to come and do here uh, the kind of work that together, uh, the kind of work that we know our community so deeply need. Right? And that is not just providing a service or providing a thing as a task, as a transaction, but rather the need to break that isolation that we know that can happen in our lives through different, different points of our lives. I am the community organizer, and what that means um, in terms of Placer People of Faith Together is that um, my role here is actually to be among you and work among you to create solutions that we understand are needed short-term and long-term for our community. Um, as Dennis mentioned, there is different things that we, that we cover, but one of the things that I am most excited about is that in living out our faith values and doing service, we also can focus on those things that we know break through isolation and the things that keep us away from God, right? And so we focus on things that can bring joy. We utilize the things that are basically the, the God that we can um, bring in into different activities that might seem mundane, such as a resource fair, uh, but with the intent to build relationships and actually get to know the community. Um, in this sense, what this means for me is that, you know, we come up and we talk and listen to each other, to deeply hear what is said, what is not said, and then try to come up with a project, something that might be fun and of service to communities, and that we also feel is good for us. Because our, our loving our neighbor as we love ourselves is that connection piece that really drives an actual community to stay together, right? And in our hope to be able to do that, we just want to live through life together, go through life together. What that is going to look like here at um, First United Way has already started to look like is um, the, the different um, pro, uh, events, you know, that are on the fourth Fridays at First United, um, which have been bringing community together um, and have been uh, exposing a lot of them for the first time, just as I am, you know, just now learning to do uh, more about you all. Um, to actually get to see and live and feel the love that this church has for the community. And it has been so exciting for me to see that because, as I mentioned, I've been, um, I've known of your church for over 20 years, living, um, I grew up um, down on Ash Street with my family, so like a couple of blocks down here. And we always recognize this building. And, um, you know, we recognize it as a white building with an empty parking lot. <laughs> and now, for me and for a lot of the families who have been invited and who have had great experiences meeting all the different folks who are serving there, um, it is no longer that. For there have, might have been uh, some emptiness in our mind, there is a fulfillment now of what community looks like, what God's love looks like in the everyday, in walking through life together. And 
I really want to say, don't tell the other churches or congregations, but y'all are my favorite in actually being <laughs> so down to just roll with it. From vaccination clinics earlier on in this summer, which we know there was a lot of tension in multiple places, there were open doors here to be able to give vaccinations. Now there's been over 100 people vaccinated here at UMC because you all opened your doors. Yes. Um, and a lot of these folks um, were looking for different things, but even after coming here and getting a vaccine, right, um, any sort of health resource, they've also now understood that here is a community that has doors open for anyone. That is really is that extended table and that anyone can come here um, to be able to receive something that they need. And in that sense, I'm just really grateful and humbled by the way in which you have shown your love by opening your doors and accepting and giving the invitation, giving of yourselves. Um, I can continue to talk on and on and on, but the other point that I wanted to really share with you all is that, um, or the other thing that I really wanted to share with you all um, that matters so much to me personally is that um, I'm here also to um, give you my gratitude um, for having sponsored me to be able to go through a really formational program um, this last semester. From, from January to about a couple of weeks ago, I was actually Pastor Massey's student as part of the Congregational Studies, um, Congregational Leadership Certificate Program that the Pacific School of Religion, where he teaches, um, has been providing. And I am so um, humbled by being able to enter in that community with other students, other young folks, people of color, and folks who are also working with faith communities, whether it's inside or outside of the church, and being able to see, as I was hoping that you can connect, that it's not just us, but we're also being part of this larger church family, God's family. Um, throughout different places in the country, um, folks join this program and being able to see what is possible here, what is pain, and understand that there is ways and wisdom and guidance that I could receive from wonderful people like um, Dr. Evans. He was wearing the Dr. Evans hat up there, and um, the Pastor Masia hat in here. Um, I was really um, strengthened and emboldened. And I really, it really clicked for me um, through that process how knowledge is a little bit of love that triggers the courage to do things when we apply it. And I'm so excited that it's not an academic thing, but it's just really been something that's nourished my soul. And I'm really looking forward to sharing with you all uh, some of the stuff that we've learned and some of it has to do with communication. How do we communicate our love, right? And then. Um, designing things and really taking advantage of those gifts that God's given us, such as creativity, and reconfiguring the resources that we have, not just material, but internal resources, which is what you all have been doing, and really being willing to step into outside of these church walls, right, and to really bring God's word to be alive in the streets, in our houses, in our neighbors' houses, through the different work that we're gonna be partnering to do. So, um, I really wanted to thank you, and I keep thinking about um, a saying you know, that um, happiness is a form of gratitude, and honestly, I really couldn't show you in any way just how happy I am inside, um, and equally grateful for the work that you're all willing to do, for being willing to give of yourselves, and for being willing to listen deeply to yourself so that you all know what to share, and also to others so that we know how to give it. So that love is, um, I love it, that action. Thank you all so much, and, and I'm uh, really looking forward to chatting with you all when, when we are done with service today. Thank you.